Hello, everybody. I'm awake. I got to get used to my new hair. I decided to color my hair this morning, mostly to hide the gray. And because it's only a little bit where I do have hair that still has some color, it's only a little bit darker than this. But when I, I noticed the last couple days, I kept pulling it tight into a little scrunchy. It was one of those things. It was getting on my last nerve. I don't know what it looks like. We'll find out. But I went upstairs and took my favorite sewing snips and I just started cutting. I even cut the length of it myself because I couldn't take it anymore. I cut a whole handful of hair. I took away a lot. I'll let you see the back, but I don't even know what the back looks like. <laughs> I haven't looked at it in the mirror. But anyway, <laughs> that's what I did today. So hello, everybody. Mark told me I looked like I had um, one of those 70s shag haircuts. So I made sure before I got ready tonight to go put some styling mousse in it to give it a little body holding power because my hair doesn't like to hold curl. And I knew I was putting my curlers in really late. So this is what it's going to be until I can, you know, when I can safely go out and get a haircut, I will. Otherwise, when it gets on my nerves, I'm taking my little handy snips and everything I can reach, I'm cutting. <laughs> I one time thought I saw my one of my favorite actresses of all time, Tyne Daly. I saw her when she was getting ready to have her 50th birthday. So this was a while back. It was on Oprah's show. And she said that she shaved her head for her 50th birthday. And, of course, Oprah thought that was cool. And I thought that was cool. And I thought at the time, oh, I'd like to do that. I'll have to remember that. But Oprah and I have a problem. We have big old bowling ball heads. And so when it came to the 50th birthday, and I'm looking at this big old head, and I thought, maybe not. <laughs> So I'm sorry, Tyne, if you ever hear this, I admire you. I love you to bits, but I don't have your gorgeous face, and I have a great big old head. So anyway, I did not shave my hair, and I will not shave my hair. I'm not sure the world's ready to see this big old head shave. So how is everybody tonight? I was feeling kind of tired. I've been trying to go to bed earlier and wake up earlier. Well, I'm doing good with getting up earlier. I'm not good at falling asleep earlier, so I'm a little tired. And then my daughter was here today, and her and the young man got all the last-minute stuff done. You could tell they were tired of, um, tired of painting that deck. I tell you, if they never see another deck to paint. But anyway, hello, everybody. So, I was down here earlier, and I was making a video. Is Adele here by any chance? Annette is here from Kissimmee. Oh, what a sweet place. But I promised Adele Parsons that I would make a video of our new endeavor. And our new endeavor are these house, heart, and home um, blocks. Hi, Jen. I found on AQS, I found a free pattern and they were urging people to make this pattern and consider doing a block, um, a block swap. And let me show you. If you belong to AQS, you can find it on there. If you'd like to participate in ours, I'm sure that it's on our, our group's I.O. site. But here 
is what they make. Oh, thank you, Cheryl, because I tell you what, I just hacked at it. Hacked at it. <laughs> it was so funny when I picked it up out of the sink. It was a whole handful. And I even told Mark, I cut the ends myself. And he looked at me like, how? And I said, you just pull it and go chunk. <laughs> but anyway, this is the block swap that we're going to probably call it our COVID quarantine, COVID community quilt. And what we're doing is anybody who wants to participate, you will get the pattern for this. You will make one block for yourself and then make another block for each person who's going to participate we're doing the eight and a half inch squares. It'll finish at eight inches. And I suggested that you put something, do something to make the block look like, represent you. And we painted my brick house a mossy, sagey green. So I did my house green. And then do you want to see what I put on it? Made with love. I put a little charm on my heart. And then what I'm going to do, I need to find one down here. I'm going to take this pen and I'm going to sign my name, Deb Johnson, and the year 20. So let me... Let me sign this, and then I'll show you. The pen I had upstairs was running out of ink. Well, it's not very, it's not very dark yet, but I will make it darker. But I'm signing it. There, I put my name and the year, and then that. And what I'm going to do is everyone who makes this, when you get the, your blocks, see, you'll have them, um, however many of us are participating, you'll have their version, because their version will be different than mine. And so what I'm going to do is then I'm going to give you, I'm going to work out a font that says something like, safe at home, or I forget, Susan had a good idea of what to say. So I will send email a file of that font, and if they want to cut out letters and do some fusion, fuse them on their quilt in their border, or if, and then maybe do a raw edge applique. So... I already did, Miss Cheryl. So if you and all you need, uh-oh, and just need any kind of envelope that you can fold and put this in because, you know, it'll fold down to whatever kind of, and make an envelope. Take a piece of printer paper and a little glue and make your own envelope. That'll work too. And it will just take a regular stamp, and you can get the stamps ordered to be sent to you at home. So let me write my address. If you would like to be a part of this, you and you have to work, I'm going to make the due date. These blocks have to be back by, let me see. I spent about three hours making mine. Let's see. How about this? 10 days from today. Okay. 10 days from today, you have to have them in the mail. Does that sound okay? You have to make them and have them in the mail. Get Have them ready to mail 10 days from today. Because I'm afraid if we don't put a deadline on it, we won't get, we, we'll let it you know how if you don't have a deadline, you keep saying, I'll do that tomorrow. I'll do that tomorrow. Well, sometimes tomorrow never comes. So we will do it. Have them ready by May 17th. I think I made eight and all together. One for me to keep, seven to pass on. And I think that's for right now, at least, that's how many, you know, that's about what we've got. I think we had seven all together, but I'll see. 
So, anyway, I totally understand Kathleen Ziegler. It's not a worry. I saw that and I thought, what a sweet memento of this oddly, strangely terrifying time. Because I want to tell you, did I have my hair done? Oh, you're so cute. I was telling them this morning, I was using my Feria Hair Color 91, <laughs> mainly to cover my gray because it, it's so white. It's like I disappear. And um, I, I colored my hair. And then I looked at it and past couple days, I've been pulling it tight and it's scrunchy and I've been hating it. So I got, I was telling them I used these scissors and I just started hacking at it. I pulled it straight up, cut it across, pulled it straight all the way back, cut it, and cut it across. Then I pulled it out here and cut it over an inch off of it. Pulled it out this way, covered over an inch, pulled back, pulled it out this way, cut it over an inch, pulled out that way, cut it over an inch. Then I had this long stuff, so it made me look like I have a mullet. So I took that back hair and I just cut it and pulled out this side and just cut it. Have no idea what it looks like in the back. I have yet to look in a mirror, <laughs> but I cut a whole handful off because I said, bottom line, it's going to grow back. It's okay. And I couldn't take it anymore. I was ready to get out my shaver and shave my head bald. Except that I've got a big bowling ball head. And I don't even want to see my big head bald. <laughs> so, hello, Diane57, sweetheart. So, anyway, but, you know, where there's a will, there's a way. I used to cut my kid's hair, and um, Mark and I do his hair. So, I've kind of, I've learned... Don't be shy. Just get the scissors and go to it. So anyway, well, thank you. I'm glad you like it. But I, like I say, I have no idea what it looks like in the back. I think I'm almost afraid to know. <laughs> Sorry, I was looking out the door. There must be somebody visiting. The, we have this little pond across the street. And I, there's this one child. He's about 12 years old. And he comes out often and fishes. It does my heart good. It's like the little Andy Mayberry right here. <laughs> so I love it, you know, and he's so good. He doesn't throw the rocks into the water or anything. So once again, this is our heart and home block that we're doing. Uh, yeah, <laughs> just, I just whack it, Diane. And uh, so there we go. So anyway, it took me, like I say, about three hours to make eight blocks. And I made a video. I'm going to edit it tonight. I'll stay up all night if I have to to get it edited and then get it placed. And here is my block. And here's a little charm I put on there for each person. It says made with love. So this is mine. I'm going to sign my name and date each block and then just fold them up, put them in an envelope, put a regular stamp on them and send them out. And I'm not going, if anybody participates, then I will send you the addresses. If I'm not familiar with you, I'll get you to send them to me. But I think we pretty much know everybody here. So I was very excited to get all these done. So you're probably wondering, okay, Deb, this is supposed to be Galaxy or Outer Space Week. Wait till you see how much I've gotten done. Nothing. <laughs> I figured I'll just show you how I'm going to start. I haven't had a chance. I finished the Mandala Pros. I finished that binding. It's now hanging up on the wall upstairs. I, what else have I, I worked on my undersea. I, okay. Let me tell you, let me tell you, you know, I tell you all my mistakes and all my secrets. I know you'll keep my secrets for me, but I was upstairs and I wanted to trim up the undersea and I was real tired. It was Sunday night. I had done the Sunday live stream, been busy, busy, busy. It bothered me having the raggedy edges and the batting hanging because I hadn't trimmed it since I took it off the frame. 
I sat there on my lap and I said, I can do this. I can trim it. I can look. I can get it pretty even. It's not that hard. <laughs> um, let me see. I'm not sure if you can tell, but it dips down to the right. <laughs> look how much it dips down. It is about this much off from one side to the other. So, Deb's going to have to do what Deb does best, which is fix the boo-boos. <laughs> oh, thank you. So, Mark, would, it, I said, well, what do you think? I just cut it. He goes, honey, I made you that big cutting table you can pull out and lift up the leaf so you've got four feet by seven feet of cutting space. Have you ever thought of using that? <laughs> um, that's a good idea. Yeah, that's a good idea. Um, but I got kind of impatient. He went, oh, my God, you are off. So I've decided I can fix it. Okay. If you look at it, I'm going to take, I'm going to come right. Soon as I get past that jellyfish, I'm going to trim down some. That'll take part of, that'll take care of a little bit of it. So that boat up there is going to be missing part, okay? Then I said, oh boy, what I'm going to do to make up the rest is take off the right bottom. And I've got a lot of little appliques on there. I'll carefully take them off. And then after I take off part of that bottom tapered to make, you know, to get some of that extra off. Then I'm going to have to come back with some sand area, add over and put back on my appliques. So if in doubt, use a cutting table. <laughs> when you do it on your lap, you think you're cutting it straight. You're probably not. So anyway, yeah, he's a hoot. And you know what? At first, because we've been together now 15 years, almost 16 years. And at first, I wasn't used to somebody being so brutally honest. <laughs> and I'd kind of get my feelings hurt just a little bit. But then after I calmed myself down and thought about it, I thought, he's right. And, you know, I hate when, when you ask somebody, what do you think of this? And they go, fine. Because that means... Number one, they're not really looking at it. They don't give a darn. And they're not even going to take the time to try to help you. They don't care. They just, they're checked out. Well, he doesn't do that. <laughs> and I have learned to, when he get, tells me what he really thinks, to kind of, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and wait until my blood pressure goes down a little bit. And then look at what he said and go, hmm, is he right? And when I ask him a question and he gives me an answer, he's usually right. Although, honestly, he told me I look like I had some kind of shag hat cut, you know, haircut today where it just hacked it. Now that I've got it curled, I think it looks better than I thought. So he was wrong about that one. <laughs> Yes, he does take an interest. Oh, gosh. Oh, yeah. When I went to my son's wedding two years ago, I made myself a dress. And I thought, I can, I mean, the pattern, I cut it by the pattern. So if I need to take three inches, just take three inches. And I tried it on. He said, honey, that hem is going all up and down. Oh, it was and so it ended up being ankle length by the time I evened it up. But you know what he did? He got on the floor and he marked it from the floor. He said, I remember when I was little, my mom would get me to help her do this. I know how to do this. So if you're going to sit on the floor and help me even up this dress, I'm going to listen to you. So that is good. But, you know, I, hi. You're Diane. Oh, Peter Egan. Hi. I recognize that name. I wonder if you're the one that gave me help 
on how to make bubbles. Somebody gave me directions, and I remember it was a man's name. I don't know if it was you, but I appreciate the help. In fact, when I get that all bound, I'm going to do some little bubbles. But anyway, it's nice to have somebody to... That's the only one he's done, but he did not want me walking down the aisle at my son's wedding with that kind of him. I guess I could have pretended it was a handkerchief him. I'm not sure anybody would believe it. <laughs> so anyway, all right. I think I talked to you about everything. I've got these done. And I'm feeling all better. I don't know if I, y'all might, I don't know if you were here Sunday, but last Thursday, I wasn't feeling good. Somebody said I looked tired during the Thursday night stream. Turned out I got some kind of virus. My lymph node here, oh my gosh, it got so tender and painful. And then I just felt headachy and a little nauseous and very tired, very sleepy. Luckily, I had no fe fever. She would have, have you stand on a chair. Yeah. Oh, isn't that cute? Because every time she'd go to market, your knees got ticklish. What a good memory that is. I got so scared. I woke up Saturday morning coughing really hard. And I thought, oh, please, don't let this be COVID. And I remember thinking, you know how strange thoughts come into your head. I know that you do the same thing. I said to myself, what are Mark and the girls, the kids, going to do with all of my fabric? I can see them hauling it out saying 25 cents for all of it. <laughs> and then I thought, I'll have to write all my kids a note. I'll have to write my Mark a note because if I get sick or go in the hospital, he can't be with me. I went way too far that way, but you know what it did? It shook me up and said, girlfriend, stop taking chances. If you caught this virus, you could have caught the COVID one too, because I started thinking, how did I get this virus? It could be something as taking something from the front door from a person, standing just a little bit too close. So I finally was feeling better by Sunday, but was still really tired, got really tired easily. And it was one of those things that when I would get up and do things, all of a sudden I'd like get hot and sweaty, but never ran a fever. Oh, I bet you, Kathleen, because you know what? You had bronchitis and so many of the symptoms are right in there, sweetie. Oh, no, Cheryl. Oh, no. See, I'm angry. I'm very, very angry. We should not be going out to work yet. We should be getting, why are big businesses being bailed out left and right? We should be getting more checks for these people, 25% who've lost their job. We should be able to stay home because do you know the spike we're going to have in two weeks? It's going to be horrible. All of the states, not one single state qualifies to be opening up. So please let us know, sweetie, how your grandson is. Please let us know. Oh, Cheryl, you've got a good governor. You know, we've already come this far. What are two or three weeks more? I mean, we've got to New York is going down, but they're the only state that is. We need to go down. Two weeks ago, my state was at a hundred, no, underneath 100 K, my, I'm part, I'm sorry. My state, yeah, it was like 5,000. Now it's got 11,000, 12,000. I mean, we've shot up, but my county was at less than a hundred, like 85. Now we're at 200, almost 300. So it's scary. We're still really going up. And honestly, honestly, oh, good, good, Kathleen. Good, good. Oh, yes. I love Whitmer of Michigan. Oh, my gosh, what a wonderful woman. And she's being attacked by the right, and it's wrong. And the thing is, now, instead of being told, oh, we're not going to have many people die, we're being told, oh, well, that's just what's going to have to happen. No, these are lives, people. So anyway, I'm going to get off my soapbox because we got a quilt to make. But 
please be safe. It scared me, and I realized, Deb, back up and be careful with everything. So, Mark, every time, like, when somebody came to the door and he said, you touch that doorknob, go wash your hands for 20 seconds. And he's being really good because I think it scared him, too. Because I said, you know, hon, I'm sick. And I knew when my lymph node hurt, I knew I had a virus. So I don't want this virus. And please do me a favor. Take good care of yourselves. If you need us, we're here for you. But don't take the chance. Oh, wow. That was, oh, Jim, that's awful. I know what it's like. But I've heard of people coughing so bad. They crack ribs, strain muscles. Oh, you sweetheart. I'm so sorry. Kathleen, are you feeling any better? Uh, yeah, there you go. Oh, boy, DQ. I could use a milkshake right about now. So here we go. Last night I made chicken. I'm getting tired of figuring out what to cook. I said, well, we've had beef. We've got to have chicken. So I found some recipe. Oh, good, Kathleen. I found a recipe that was for Parmesan garlic chicken. It was real garlic, all right. <laughs> but it was actually pretty good. But it was just different, you know, because we're getting tired of eating the same stuff. So, uh, oh, Cheryl, that's terrible. You had a cracked rib, too. Oh, good news. Our air conditioning wasn't working so good, and I thought I thought it was a 40-year-old system. It's a 30-year-old system, practically a baby. Anyway, but luckily he just had to fill, fill it with two and something somethings of Freon, and $293 later, it's fixed. So yay for that, because I thought, oh, this is going to be it. We're going to have to put a new... Um, air conditioning system in i didn't want to do that so okay oh that's right you did i remember about you falling in a shower that's when you went to live with your daughter sweetheart oh my goodness that didn't you fall like and hit your rib on the bathtub edge oh it is expensive i knew and i didn't complain either because i said nope i know that that stuff they're running out of it or they banned it and it's tricky. At some point, I'm going to have to make the decision. All right. Let me see. It's so cool that you know about Freon, Cheryl. Y'all are awesome ladies. All good. Yes. And you know what? You ever want everybody to feel better. And if you have any, any fears or worries, please bring them here because... We have big shoulders, and we have found that sense of community is more important than anything. And so please feel like you can share with us because we are here for you. Okay, let's see. Close all. I am trying to grab my photos so I can show them to you. Humma, humma, humma. Let me see. All right. Now, somewhere I've got it in here. Um, um, hmm. I know I do. I'm looking. I'm not seeing it. Let me do a search. Hold on. Oh, I know what. I think I put it in mine, in my folder. So let me see. Yep, I sure did. Okay. All right. Oops. All right. I had to make sure before I did this, I had to make sure that there was something like this because I didn't want just a, I didn't want just something that looked cool. I wanted it to be a real available space project. So let me grab a sheet of paper and then I'm going to go back to the photos and I'm going to grab the first one. 
I'm going to go down to copy. And then I'm going to go back to my word program and I'm going to paste it on here. All right, paste it. Here we go. Okay, there it opens up. This, what I've decided to do is my molten planet. Now, let me go back. I looked at one. It's really cool. And it's not something that they have seen in space right now. But, oh, here's another good one. Okay, I'll copy this one, then go here and place it, paste. I hope I'm not going to put it over top of this one. Hold on, let me see. Let me make sure. Have you ever, I have gotten a picture and had it put right where I thought I was going to put it, and nope, it went and replaced a different one. All right, so now I'm going to take this one. And I'm going to make it a wee bit smaller because I don't want to print everything. Now I'm going to go down, make sure. And now let me go see if I can find the molten planet with a ring. I thought that was the coolest looking thing. So let me see. Where is that molten planet with a ring? Hmm. Now I know it was here. Hmm. I hope I didn't lose it. Hmm. Well, if I can't find it tonight, I'm not going to put the ring on tonight anyway. So I will make sure to go and find it another time. Because I know I've got it somewhere. Come on. Sometimes they take so long to open up. Okay. This one's cool because it shows a bright star in the distance, and that might be awesome. So let me put this one on. Okay. All right. I think I'm going to print pages one. Let me see. I'm just going to print page one right now. Okay, so I'm going to print it, and I hope Mark will hear it. All right, and that will give me a really good start. All right, so now I'm going to, okay. All right, close this out. Okay, now I'll come back to y'all. So what I wanted to do by this, what I wanted to do, okay, oh, irises, I love irises, tulips, woo, and yes, if you have a different, if you have a different thing you want to make, not a problem. Because I want you to make something you're going to enjoy. I offer these exercises for people who want to kind of push their comfort zone. Really thirsty tonight. Okay. I've got muslin for my backing. But I think I'm now going to... I've got to decide what background to use. Now, if you'll wait just a second, let me go ask Mark to throw down that. Let me go ask Mark to throw down that printer page. Mark? Do you mind throwing down the printer page? Thank you, beautiful.
Yep, just drop it. Just drop it. It'll come right down. Thank you, beautiful. Thank you. Going good. Okay, I've got it. Yay! Okay. It actually printed, it printed all three. All right. So I'm seeing that the background, by the time you have a nice, bright, oh, that's so good. It's nice you got flowers. But see how dark the background is? So this would work. What this is, this is a tone on tone. This is a black with tiny little spots. So this would work. Let me get one more. Now, I'm not sure this one would be as good. I saw this one. I saw this one, but that's a little too light. Then I saw this one, but I think that's a little too distinct. So I think my first instinct of going with this is a good one. So what I'm going to do is cut this fabric. I'll save this with the bulk of it. And I know I want to make it this big. Okay, I'm going to flip it over. Whoops, sorry. All right, I'm going to flip it over. And I'm just going to need, at the most, one half of it. So, let me see. And you know I love to tear fabric. If that bothers you. Get ready. <laughs> All right. And remember also, make your background fabric bigger than you want the finished piece. Because by the time you get all of your thread painting and stuff done, it will have shrunk up. So, all right. Now, the uh, next thing I'm going to do is starch it okay let me see okay i'm going to starch it let me get my iron heated up i'm loving my new iron black and decker has always been a good company to me okay while my iron's heating up let me refold this i've got some fabric to put away tomorrow I'm really trying hard not to let fabric just pile up on me because I it took me months to clean this room and I don't want to go backwards. So All right. So I've got this put back together. that over there all right now I'm starching this and the reason I'm starching this is because I'm starching this because a fabric a nice stiff fabric is much easier to work with especially when you're going to be doing all the things that we're going to be doing to this one now, before I leave this, I'm going to turn this over. I'm going to turn this over. And then see if you can guess what I'm going to do now. I'm going... What were, let's see. Okay, here we go. What I'm going to do now is put, 
Now, I was thinking, you know how cheap I am. I was thinking, should I piece the sky and so that I'm not wasting the fabric that's underneath the red planet that I'm going to put on? And I said, Deb, I think that's being a little too cheap, part personally. What the planet's probably only going to be about a 12 inch circle. I think I can afford to waste 12 inches of a background. So, all right, I'll put this on first. This fusible interfacing will give stiffness to the fabric so that when I'm doing thread painting, when I, I'm going to be doing trapunto with this, I'm going to put a circle of batting under this red molten planet. And this way, having the interfacing will give the fabric enough stiffness to ha handle. Because let me tell you, doing trapunto can make the background start to shift and bunch and all of that. And I don't want that to happen. So now I do the first bit of ironing this way. And in a moment, I will turn it over and iron from the other side. But first, I want to take and put the rest of the interfacing on. But anyway, this, this is how I get started. And I thought, I'll show you all how I get started. I want to wish all of you a happy Mother's Day. That's coming up this Sunday. And I'll go ahead and tell you that tomorrow is my birthday. I will be 64 years old. It's give them hell Harry Truman's birthday too. And I've always been very proud that I was born on Harry Truman's birthday. So I'm very tickled. And... I made it, I made it to 64, so that's not too bad, is it? Let me tell you, there were times I wondered. <laughs> so, okay. All right, there we go. But I'm really tickled, and I have no idea. I feel like asking for a mulligan for my birthday, and maybe after this COVID thing, um, then I can celebrate it. I'll pick a date after we're free. I know some of y'all have had birthdays during lockdown, too. So, well, thank you, sweetheart. Thank you, all of you. Okay, here we go. I'm still like a little kid. I do get excited at birthdays. So... Okay, I might have Chinese food for my birthday tomorrow. I don't know what I'm going to do. Oh, I think I know what I'm going to do for dessert. You always get to pick your dinner and your dessert. And after, who was that? Kathleen, that maybe that mentioned Dairy Queen? I'm just thinking a Dairy Queen shake might be in my future. <laughs> so, okay. So now I'm just going to go slowly. Back and forth. Ah, we're the same age, June. Yep, I graduated high school in 1974. God, that seems like so long ago. <laughs> but anyway, my daughter who lives in town, I have one daughter who lives in town, and she's the one that's been bringing the young man over to help us get some things done. He needed, he wanted to pick up some money, and we needed stuff done. And, uh, but anyway, she said, Mom, I thought for your birthday, I, my present would be I'll go to the plant nursery and get your favorite flowers because she knows that I have been scared to go. And she said, Oh, Mom, you would not have wanted to be there. It was jam packed full. So she went and got my plants, and I'm so excited. They're beautiful. So that's going to keep me busy the next couple weeks. All right. So now I've got this 
this is in good shape. I don't need to use my back right now. That will be once I, I was thinking about it. I said, okay, if I do this planet on top of this, then when do I put the trapanto under it? Because I am going, what I've decided to do, let me get my directions. Oh, you wait till you see what we're working on Sunday. It's going to be fun. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my inspirations on this. Okay, you see my inspirations. Hi, oh, Bert, Bonnie, you're so sweet. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You are a dear heart. And... Let me say hi to my Miss Bonnie. Hello, Miss Bonnie. How are you, sweetie? She is a dear heart. She is a dear heart. Oh, that's great, Sue. Yeah, I've got so many plants that I'm going to be planting. I'll be busy. And then hopefully, now I don't know what plants will be available by the time Miss Bonnie gets down there, but she's got the cutest, oh my gosh, the cutest cottage and I can't wait to see what she puts in. Oh, hi, Marsha. Yep, I think a lot of us, I've been surprised how many of us are 64. So that's pretty awesome. But thank you, Miss Bonnie. You are such a sweetheart. All right, so now I've got my background. Then I'm thinking... I'm looking at these. I'm thinking these are going to be the majority of my sun are my red molten planet. I think that this is going to be inside some of the cracks and crevices. So what I think I'm going to do is maybe make the predominant part of this red plant. Oh, I don't know. Maybe I should do it a darker one and bring the light in. What do you all think? Happy Mother's Day, everybody. Happy Mother's Day. Here are all my different... You know this might be a good base. Do y'all have any idea? Yes, if you get cold. We're, we're supposed to be down to 35. I've got them on the base of the deck. And I will be putting a tarp over them. I think I'm going to make this be the base of my planet. And then I can go up and down and all over with all of these. So, now what I have to do is cut out a planet. And I can show, I'm going to show you several different ways that I'm going to do that. Okay. What you have to do is you have to make a reasonable circle. Now, I know some planets are slightly ovalish. Okay, okay, okay. But I'm not going to be that perfect. Now, here is 12 inches. I was thinking of making a 12-inch planet, but that might be too big. I'm looking at my background here. I'm thinking a 10-inch is probably the biggest I should do, maybe even 9 inches. I'll say 10 inches. So watch what I'm going to do. Now, let me go see if I've got a paper plate down here. Nope, didn't have it. But don't worry, I've got other ways of doing this. All right, I'm going to take this piece of cardboard. I am going to find a big, strong pen to go into the center of this cardboard. I might put two pins together. That one's a little, aha, I'll put a sewing needle right into the center of the cardboard. Then I'm going to take a piece of selvage. And I'm going to make 
this, I'm going to tie this salvage into a knot that's not too tight. I want it to be able to swivel, okay? So now I'm going to take and tie this knot. All right, come over these two pins. Then I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to measure... Mm -hmm. Oops. Oh, good. This friction pen still works. I'm going to come and, and I'm going to tie this loop on. Whoops. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I mean, I've got three pieces stacked up, so let me get these pens all the way through. All right. Then I'm going to tie this on and tie it down low on the pin. My mistake was trying to tie it up too high. And let's see, this will now be how big? I want it to be about four and a half inches, and that's just about what it is. So now all I do without pulling too hard is just making sure the string is pretty taut. Whoops. Did I make... Oops. Let me try it again. And move it back down this way. How big is this cardboard? 10 inches. It should work if I've got it about even. Let's see. I have to hold the pin straight up and down. If I lean it, it will vary the size of my circle. All right, so now I have a pretty good reference point. And then I'll get my paper scissors. And I'll come in here and cut it. And if there's anywhere it doesn't quite look right, I'll give it a little tweak. But I think this will end up as a pretty good... And what I was doing is turning my pencil and my hand into a compass. You remember those weird things that we used to try to figure out how to do math with. Okay. It's so funny. I wasn't very good in math in high school. But I have learned enough by common sense of what I need to do. Now this has a little bit of a a knob here, so I'm going to trim this back off. And I made it a little bit bigger, so I can trim it. Okay, let me put these other pieces away. Okay, now let me get my, oops, got a little bit of a knob right there. Okay, now let me see. This is still, it's nine and three quarters. But you know what? I'm going to tuck under. I'm going to tuck it under. I'm not going to leave it raw edge. So I think then this should be perfect. I think it's pretty round. All right. So now what I'm going to do is put it, and this looks like batik, but look, it's not. It's just a print. So you have to make sure... It's only going to go one way. Now, what I'm going to do is, what did I do with my chalk? Who? I just was working with my chalk today. How could I lose it? All right. I've got good news. I've got Taylor's chalk, and that will work fine. Okay. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to place it on here leaving a little space around the edge. Because remember, oh, no, I don't have to leave space around the edge. I'm sorry. I cut it big enough that I can tuck it under. All right. 
so here is my circle and then I cut it out. And I was thinking today that how am I, I'm going to do reverse applique to have these areas look like they're popping through. So I was thinking, how do I do that? And, you know, I probably should have done this a darker color. Hold on, before I cut too far, let me go back here. I think this is the color I want. I forgot. I'll still use this. I'll still use this for some of the lighter areas. But I forgot it has to be almost black. Oh, okay. Let's try this again. All right. Nice Jenny Buyer. All right. Put it here. And that little bit that I cut won't go to waste because it'll be my highlights. But this way I can add some black to this and then I can go to the lights. But I needed to start darker because you see my planets here? They're very dark. Now this one's not the one I'm doing because I want the flames to be coming out. But it gives me an idea of what kind of surrounding I might want for it. All right. So I was trying to decide, I know I want to do Trapunto on it, how am I going to do this? And then how do I do, add the applique, you know, just all of this. How, how do I do this and when do I add the Trapunto? Because I think that's the thing you mostly have to think of. You don't go get a pattern, you've got to figure this kind of stuff out on your own. And I said, okay. I think I'm going to want to stitch it, do the reverse applique. I think I'm going to want to do that by hand and holding it in my hand. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the surface of this all reversed applique. And at the same time, okay. At the same time, when I have a piece that I might be able to use later, I just put it in here. And then when I roll it back on the comic board, it's there for me the next time I need it. But I'm going to work. I'm going to work on this in my hand so I can. Because if I put it on here and get it trapuntoed, it's going to be really hard to work on that. So. Oh, Trapunto. Oh, yeah. Don't worry. I'm going to show you. It's just mainly I'm going to, once I get this sewn on, I'm going to make a little slit behind it on the back, on this front fabric. I'm going to make a little slit and then stiff, stick my circle of polyester batting or two. And in fact, let me tell you something I do for something that I want to look round. I'll do a piece that measures a half inch in diameter less than this. Then I'll do another piece an inch less than that, another piece an inch less, and then a little circle in the middle about this egg. And then I'll take and put little dots of glue to put all of those as one, think of them as a Frisbee. And that will give it a, a nice rounded look. You can just put one piece. But I really want this thing to pop off the surface, which is another reason I only barely want to turn it under and stitch it because at, when it comes up, it's going to be a little touch smaller. So what I'm going to do this week, so just know I might end up putting some little interfacing on here. I'm not sure. I probably will just starch it real good. But what I'm going to do is then take some chalk and kind of do some little marks. Look at, I'm going to look here at my photos and see kind of how that flame can show through. Then I'm going to take some stitches, uh, I mean scissors, little snips, and I'm going to cut along the line I drew. Okay. Now these, 
will be turned under eventually, will be turned under and sewn back down. But let me show you something. Because then I've got to, well, I've got a few minutes. Watch this. And the more curvy and wavy you get them, the more realistic they're going to look. Now, I've never done this, but I've been thinking it through. How do I do this? Okay. So now what I've done is I've ironed, I've ironed a little seam allowance for that. Now, watch what happens. Let me grab a piece of this. This is why when I see fabric that would make a good quilt, a good landscape, good space, I grab it because I can shop, I can shop my stash. And it's, be it's better when you can buy it on sale. Okay. So now that's pressed. Now watch what happens when I do this. Oops, come on. All right, let me bring you over this. But you see what I've done now? Is I've put the flame fabric, the molten part, under this. And... Now, I will take some dark silk or thin, nice thin thread, and I will stitch this down. But I'm going to do this all over this planet. And, ha and this is what I was thinking. We'll see what happens. But I want, I want that molten stuff to come through. Now, when you look on here, you see... A shine coming out of there. That's when I'll come in with my ink tents and kind of show it fizzing out. And if I have some near the edge, I'll have it, I'll draw with ink tents like this. And I, that's also when I will get some thread and I'll do thread painting. I'll use the, that yellow orange color and I'll do fine lines. And right close to it, I'll make them really thick. And they'll get thinner and thinner and thinner to look like it's that molten just popping out. And if you'll notice on these two, they have a lighter ring around the edge. And so I need to see how I can do that best. Whether I can use ink tints or whether I can use some of those Lumiere metallic paints that I had. But anyway, this is how I'm going to make the fire and the smoke come out of this. And so I, and then, you know, like I say, I'll take my ink tints and make a furry edge around here. But I can put all different kinds of colors. I can, I'm going to put some black on this planet part itself to show some shadows. And then I'll put some lighter areas. Because like they have little circles and things there that I will put, take lighter fabric and put. So I'm just going to kind of be sitting. This is what I'm, this I'm going to do by hand. Okay. So does that make any, anybody have, yes, that's called reverse applique. Because normally you would put the fabric on top and fold it and stitch it. But this reminds me of Hawaiian applique where they slit the front fabric and let the back show through. And it's a little different than what we normally do, but I think it's the best way to get this effect because that way, because what the planet is doing, it's got fissures and cracks in it that the molten part is coming, is coming out. So this is going to be my, I'm going to have a lot of work to do on it. I'll work on it this week. And then next week, I'll show you that disc where I take graduated sizes of batting so that we can really get a nice half round, as close as we can get to a half round. But you can't do it with just one piece. You have to do it with, because the fabric, you have to let the fabric kind of stretch over the difference in the size of the circles. So... But this is reverse applique. I can't wait 
and I'm going to pull out my silk threads and do it. But if you don't have silk threads, whatever your thin thread that matches or is a little darker. Remember, always go darker. Never go lighter if you're trying to match a thread. Okay? And I'm at the same time, I'm going to take pieces of all the different color reds so that I, and maybe even some dark browns and blacks so that I can piece, I'll um, put those on top and just have the molten part popping through. Does that make sense? So I'm going to do applique and reverse applique to get my molten planet done. And the neatest thing is the, the rings, the picture I saw of the planet with the rings, the red, molten planet with the rings, the rings look like this because they had all kinds of little moons and, and space rock and stuff in it. So this ring will end up coming around. So I'm very, very excited. And I think I do want to put a, whoops, let me, let me show you this. I do want to put a bright star out there because I don't want my red planet to feel like it's all alone. So anyway, here we go. And that's that. And now I was worried because I didn't have anything done on it yet. And I said, well, Deb, why don't you just show them the process you use? And uh, my camera's a little crooked. I'll get it. <laughs> so, but I thought, I'll show you the process I use. And it might give you a few hints here and there. So, is there anything? Uh, <laughs> you know, I'm mostly self-taught. So, sometimes I'm smart enough to research some of these terms and things. And sometimes I just tell you what I know and what I've learned on my own. But I have to tell you, I am not a bit uh, ashamed of saying I'm mostly self-taught. Let me tell you why. Because when you're self-taught, sometimes you have to be extra creative. And because you nobody has taught you the specific way or the right way or the easy way or any way. And so, um, so you can think outside the box. And I've had people say, how do you get brave enough to do it? And I didn't even think about it being brave. I just thought I didn't know how else to do it. So I made it up. <laughs> I want to show before we go, I want to show Miss Bonnie, what did I do with my house blocks? Did y'all see where I happened to toss those? Hmm. I put them somewhere. Sorry, Miss Bonnie. But I got all my house blocks made today and a video. And now... I'm not sure where I laid them. So, here they are. Here they are. So, I got, I got eight of them made, and we'll see how many people we have to sign up. And Miss Bonnie, she said that she would participate. She's going to be a little later than the rest of us getting hers, but she's got a great excuse. So, she's starting her brand new life. And you know what? I remember 16 years ago when I started my new life, best thing that could have ever happened. So we're excited. Miss Bonnie's on an adventure. She's moving to an entirely new state and couldn't be more proud of that, Miss Bonnie. Couldn't be more proud of my sister in age. <laughs> So I am just loving it. There's something special about reinventing yourself and starting all over again. It's pretty fantastic. It's kind of freeing, you know? So we wish the best for her. Whoa, that's going to be tricky, Miss Bonnie. But, you know, I know she can do it. Miss Bonnie is very creative, very resourceful. And I think it's us 1956 babies. I mean, we we had to be. <laughs> so anyway, but in Miss Bonnie, I put a cute little heart, a charm heart on these that said made with love. 
So anyway, but I did a video and I will be posting it because I had someone that wants to participate and she's a little shy. And I said, oh, don't be shy. Come on, jump on in. The water's great. <laughs> So anyway, I'm going to show her that if I can get that video edited tonight, I want to get it up right away so I can show her. All right. So anything else to say? Sorry, I, I got a little twerked earlier today about this whole restarting too soon. Please be careful with yourself. Please understand that when I get worried. It's only because I care. And we are not numbers. We are not just things that can be dismissed. We're people who have a lot to offer. And we've seen a lot, done a lot, know a lot. And so please take good care of yourself. Um, uh, oh, did I get? Oh, I've got to show you something. You haven't left yet. Hold on. I'm going to show you. Um, the house blocks. Um, Sue Smith, let me see. Oh, send me an email at our time to quilt at, whoops, where's my at? There it is, at twc.com. And if you send me an email, because I'm not sure if Sue Smith is on our group, but what we're going to do, you probably have to send yours to me, but send your, if you're on our group, I'll give you the address each. I'll give you them personally, not on here. And um, I'll give them to you personally. But if you're not on our group, I will, I will get you to send them to me and I'll disperse them further. So um, let me know, though, for sure. You have to let me know that you're really going to do it. And um, because other people would be making blocks for you. So I need to know you're really going to do it. And everybody else, I would like the blocks done by May 17th. Miss Bonnie has been given a Queen's exemption on that date because Miss Bonnie helped start this whole thing. So we bow down to Queen Bonnie. So anyway, it's really great. Take good care of yourself. Get good sleep. Make sure you take plenty of, uh, eat plenty of vitamin C type foods. And, uh, oh, Cheryl's definitely going to do them. Um, it's probably going to be somewhere between 7 and 10. And when you write me, I'll let you know, because I'm going to do an official list of anybody who wants to do them. All right, everybody. Have a great day tomorrow. I know I will be. Although, I don't think there's anybody to wait on me. Mark's got to work from home, so he's busy. <laughs> I'll find some way to feel special. And, uh, and well, with people like... Susan Smith and Bonnie around. It's hard not to feel special. So thank you, everyone. Sherry, hello. Nice to see you. We missed you. Thank you again, sweethearts. Take good care of yourself. Oh, I didn't realize Sherry's been here. And Sherry, if you'd like to do these, we're, we're just making a wall hanging for each of us to kind of commemorate this most unusual time in our lives and the sense of community that we have built, built on here. So just let me know at that email. June, it's so good to see you. You and Kathleen, please stay well. We need each one of you. You're all so important. Um, Cheryl, if you are on our site, oh, you can look at what the, the pattern says, but I'm not going to put any color restrictions on you because I would like each person that participates to put a, some of themselves into their block. And so that's why I use green for the house because my house is green. And But you can do whatever you wish. Happy Mother's Day to everybody. Thank you, Sherry. It was so good spending tonight with you. And take good care. I'll see most of you on Sunday. And pull out that fabric and give, give a planet a whirl. So any, or any kind of thing you can do. So... Yeah, our Susan can definitely do purple. She loves her purple, and she might do a mitten on it. But I love the idea of y'all making them so it's just special for you. All right, take good care. Bonnie, take good care of yourself. Don't let yourself get run down with all you've got on your plate. You mean too much to us. Take good care, everybody. 
Bye bye. Have a great couple days. Hopefully, I'll see you again in just a few. Bye bye. Bye bye, everybody. Mwah.